talk about something totally <laughs> non-controversial, and that's all of you that are excited about student debt and want to help everybody get out of debt. <laughs> You're like, whoa, student loan forgiveness is happening. The Biden administration. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm getting more upset the longer you talk, so <laughs> shut up, okay? <laughs> is this even gonna help the economy? So many feel it's gonna hurt inflation. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Directed IRA podcast with yours truly, Mark Kohler, my amazing co-host, Matt Sorensen. We thought this week, you know, let's just talk about something that's really not controversial at all. Um, you know, Yeah, everyone agrees on this. Yeah, it's great. I mean, everybody's excited about student debt. They think it's not a problem at all. Yeah. Uh, we thought, you know, maybe we should talk about the Ukraine, Russia, you know, Israeli peace talks. No, uh, that'd world be controversial. Hunger. We don't, yeah, we don't do controversial. Yeah, yeah, here. we don't do controversial. So we're going to talk about something totally <laughs> non-controversial, and that's all of you that are excited about student debt and want to help everybody get out of debt. <laughs> Yeah. Was that passive aggressive? Was that, was that what's called passive aggressive? Yeah. So we know there's some politics here and uh, generally we like to avoid those politics here because, you know, we like to beat up both political parties here on the Directed Diary podcast. But um, we're going to talk about the format. Student, yes. Format. Yes. Okay. okay. So I want to give a little context here. Today's episode is going to have some rant here at the opening, but we're going to get to some statistics that are super important to understand. And we're going to go to tools and strategies there are accounts and ways you can save effectively, affordably, in a tax-efficient way for college. And we're going to get to those. We want to make sure you know all of those tools. Yep. Love it. And I know a lot of people send in questions for the show on Open Forum. How do I get out of student debt if I'm in that crisis? Well, um, is it tax deductible or not? What can I do? We'll mention a few things there as well. Uh, let's just see what we can cover here. But it's mm -hmm. but So don't Turn away during this rant portion. Now, before I rant, maybe you want yeah. to give some context. Like maybe yeah, some happened? people have been living in the Amazon for the last month. You know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so you came out and you're like, whoa, student loan forgiveness is happening. The Biden administration. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, okay. So now let me say this. For those of you that can get this, great. Go get it. It's free money from the government. Bless you. Go grab it. Is okay? he really doing it? Is it all approved? It's happening. It is oh, happening. Hell. All right. It's all happening. Right. Uh, that's food for my... You can my... rant here in a moment. Okay, okay. Let me give... I'm holding back. I'm okay, holding let me back. give the um, what's happening, okay, just in case you don't know. So you can get student loan forgiveness up to $10,000 of federal student loans. Now, if you got a Pell Grant, which is 60% of student loan borrows, you get an extra ten grand for a total of 20000 Son of a... If you're a married couple that both took loans that had Pell Grants, you're getting forty grand of student oh, loan forgiveness hell. here. All right. Now, this is income-based, okay? They didn't want high-income earners to get this. Cool, whatever, it's the politics of it. So if you make 125 grand or more single, you don't get this. 250 more married, you don't get this, all right? So um, so it's limited to those that meet the income requirements and have these student loans. Now, if you got $100,000 or more in student loans, you're only gonna get 20,000 max if you had the Pell Grant um, forgiven. So that's what's happening right now. It's gonna be automatic for a lot of borrowers actually that are gonna get this. The education department's coming out with a form where you will apply for it if you're not gonna be that automatic person who gets it. Um, so there's gonna be a process for this. Also student loan payments have been extended again, you know, so you don't have to pay your student loan payments again. So that's what happened. I'm getting more upset the longer you talk. So <laughs> shut up, okay? Damn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now, Is this, this was the ramp part. So. <sighs> okay. I just want to create an opportunity for some of you to express an ex those feelings that you have deep down inside that frustrate you when you hear what Matt said. Some of you may uh, disagree with my rant on some of my rant, but let me just say a few things that most of the people I've talked to, I almost want to say all of them, have got a problem with at some level. Number one, I'm just going to give some of the issues that I think some people, you may, again, may not agree with some of these rants, and I'm sure Matt will add a few here and tone it down where I stick my foot in my mouth. But number one, really? Is this even <laughs> going to help the economy? So many feel it's going to hurt inflation. This is a publicity stunt when Biden's got the lowest approval rating of a president in how many years? And can we just throw something out there to help people like him? I'm Ridiculous. Political ploy. Number two. I know some of you are struggling under student debt, but it's your debt. You went into it. You know what? We have to live by our consequences in our life. I've done a, I've done a debt snowball in my life. As an attorney, I had to do a debt snowball to get out of some debt. You know what? We have to own what we've created. And sometimes it sucks, and I'm sorry, but me turning to the government for a handout. And then third, 
I'm going to help pay for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I just got out of my own damn debt and now I got to pay off yours with by paying more in taxes. And then we've got, oh, but it's only for the poor, not the super rich. The ones that have the most debt are the ones that aren't making more than 250 or 125. But, oh, can't help them. And it's suffocating them just as much. It's it's all perspective. Oh, boy, I don't know where to go. I yeah. just say, it's just... It's just wrong. And now, is student debt out of control? Absolutely. Do we need to rein in the cost of college? I, my kids, every one of my kids graduated without student debt because I said, I ain't paying for it. You want to go to college? Here, let me tell you what it looks like. It's not going to be pretty. So you're going to go to community college or you're going to go to junior college and then you're going to transfer into the larger colleges after you've got a small business and some income along the way and we're going to graduate debt-free. And they've done it because... We don't need to go into debt if we approach college properly. But no, let's go sign up for a top 10 whatever college and go as a freshman in a class of 500 and pay out the butt and tuition and just think, that's a great experience. <laughs> oh, my hell. I've got so many issues here. I'm just, I'm, ugh, should I just leave? Is the rant done? Okay, <laughs> rant's done. All right, now we're going to give you some stats unless you want to tone I, down the rant. I, rant. I, just, I have a little different perspective on this, but here's my rant on this. Okay, what about all the people that went to school and paid off their student loans? What about all the people that worked through college and it took them eight years to get their degree because they had two jobs to get through? And they Matt suffered. Sorensen. Are you going to give them back those extra four years they put in going to school and working? What about all the people that didn't go to college because they didn't want, they worried about the cost? They didn't go at all. They don't have a degree. They don't have student loan debt, debt forgiveness to, to get. So mm. what about all them? Where's their $20,000? All right. Well, if some of you felt that we ranted for you <laughs> and on behalf of you, job done. Yeah, mark, okay. my, mark my words, even though for those of you that get it, I love you, go get your student loan forgiveness. I'm not saying that, bless you. Um, but yeah. I guarantee you this will backfire on Biden because there's more people that are not going to get this than are, and they all made these trades. You know what else who's getting screwed on this? The parents. Mm. The parents that raided their retirement account to pay for their kid's college. The parents that took a home equity loan out of their home to pay for their kid's college. The parents who work longer and delayed retirement to pay for their kid's college. Whole other topic. They did it. But they're not getting a benefit here, too. They're not getting okay. a $20,000 forgiveness check. <sighs> All right. So let's get some stats out there now. No more rants. It's out there. So obviously a difficult topic. I'm just, ugh, my blood's, blood's boiling. Okay. I'm going to give a couple stats. Um, you know what, Matt? I'm going to give the, I'll give the crazy stats. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of the crazy rant guy today for a little bit. <laughs> okay. You want to give just the- Stay in character. <laughs> <laughs> stay in character. <laughs> the director's like, stay in character. Go. <laughs> okay. What, you want to give kind of the main line- uh, um, stats. Okay. Okay, that's my character. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Matt, you keep being the boring character. <laughs> all right, okay. All right. Okay, I'll be ready. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I got some stats. Okay, all right. You, you're going to give your crazy stats? Is that what we're waiting after for? You, no, after oh, yours. I'm first. Yeah, okay. you're first. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Here's some stats. This is really important. The total student loan debt out there right now, I don't, this is Buckle kind of up. a crazy stat yeah. too, but it's reality. 1.7 trillion in student loan debt that's trillion okay that's more than evil industries made in a decade wow one trillion dollars no 1.75 trillion the average amount owed per borrower is about 30 grand so the average student loan debt of those who have student loan debt thirty thousand dollars what was the 60 and older quote too i okay, love that one this one is surprising those 62 and older there are 2.4 million borrowers that still have student loan debt they're 62 and older. They're going to get Medicare in three years, and they still got student loan debt. Oh. You know what? I remember Obama, when he was president, he paid off his student loans while president of the United States. Oh, my gosh. That's right. I remember he that. He has student loan debt as president of the United States. Wow. Okay. Now, if that doesn't rock This crisis touches lots of people. Yeah. Now, point out, I just want to point out, $30,000 average student debt, Yeah, as you can many imagine. Some people have $1,000. You're like, okay, cool. God bless you. That was very careful of you. Those of you that lived like, like a rock star in college on student debt are now paying for it. Um, but here's five instances of, and this is all backed by, you can Google the, this, get their links to uh, Wall Street Journal on all these. These are legit. They're out there. I'm just going to give five quick crazy ones. The veterinarian who owes... $517,000 in student debt. The couple who went to law school, both of them, 160 plus 170. 
They're almost $350,000 in debt together, um, both working two, law, two jobs and with their law degrees. Uh, it's now down to $320,000 in debt. This is the one, hold, buckle up. The orthodontist who owes $1,060,945.42 as of May this year. Wow. Out of the Wall Street Journal, orthodontist. Making 255 grand a year. Some of you'd be like, that guy makes 250 grand a year. <laughs> to get out, he's, he's going more in debt with the minimum payment on his student loan debt. He'd almost have to pay $30,000 a month. Yeah. Just to and get let it. me just say this, the student loan interest deduction phases out for high income earners. At that income, he doesn't feel like he's high income. Trust me, with a million dollars in student loan debt, he does not feel like he's high income. But he's not getting the student loan interest deduction because he's high income. Yep. The couple working to pay down 500000 of student debt. And then number five, the law school graduate who lives on welfare. And he went to Southwestern Law School after a four-year degree, had 300,000 in federal loans. Sure, he enjoyed law school. Yeah. Um, now- <laughs> You know what, that's what they say. If, if you live like a lawyer while you're a law student, you'll live like a law student when you're a lawyer. Yeah, and we heard that in law school. Um, and here's the sad part, couldn't pass the bar. See, I mean, you're that, well, think about the gamble you're taking going in yeah. that studio. If you can't pass the bar, you're not even going to be a lawyer after all that. Yeah. Can't pass the bar. Yeah, Danny, talks about Danny applying DeVito for job Rainmaker. after job. He's overqualified to too many jobs. Can't get the job because he can't pass the bar. He's now on welfare. Wow. I mean, it's sad. Whew. So those are the stats. Okay. Yeah. Now let's go into some practical <laughs> strategies. I want you know what? Before we, okay, we love the combo of the 529, the Coverdale, and the Roth. We've debated for years which one's better. And you know what we've resolved, uh, we really came to this year with yeah. our team of lawyers in a big fight. It was it was knocked yeah. down, drag out. I mean, there was fisticuffs. Yeah, there I mean, was name calling. It, and, it was know. ugly. <laughs> so we decided as a law firm that neither one of them has all the answers. Again, let me repeat, 529, Coverdale, which is like a college IRA, and the Roth. They all have their own benefits and a yeah. combination of those is the key. Now we're gonna to come to the, those tools here in a moment. Yeah. But I just wanna say, for those of you out there that have student debt, can we say a couple things? Like just some things you could do? Yeah, um, go for it. Okay, first of all, as Matt alluded to- I got some to, tips here, but you, you keep rolling on this. Well, no, I want your tips too. I, I'll just say this first of all, student debt is not a write-off. The interest on your student debt can be a write-off if you're in the right, income bracket. But frankly, you went to school to get a degree so that you can be high income. So you're not going to get the student loan interest deduction, at least after you've been in the workforce for maybe five, 10 years. Yeah. So then you're paying off that loan over a 30 year term. So don't yeah. count on the student loan interest deductions, basically yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So a lot of people call up and go, how do I get a write off for my student debt? I'm just, you know, womp, womp, womp. bad news. I'm just getting it out there. There's no damn write off. So what we've helped a lot, of, I'm going to give two tips here. What we have helped a lot of clients do is build a business and the profit from that business is first focused on paying off debt, not increasing their lifestyle, not building for retirement. Let's build some sort of side hustle, some sort of side gig, some type of operation, maybe even a rental property operation. And you go in with the mindset, I'm going to dedicate that side hustle to my debt. And when you go in with that mindset, it, it can make the experience very rewarding because you know why you're, instead of, I'm going to start a business and then you've got this debt over here that's still looming. Go in with the mindset, I'm going to start this business to tackle the debt first and foremost. Then after the debt's over, I can enjoy the, the, the fruits of my business that I built. Mm -hmm. Third point, the debt snowball. Got to give Dave Ramsey uh Kudos, uh, give him props for being the leader over the last 10 years of getting the debt snowball concept out there. It's been around, he didn't invent it, but the debt snowball is a method of getting your student debt, credit card debt, whatever the debt is, and putting it in a structure where you, you don't even look at the minimum payment. You look at your student debt in a whole new light and the debt snowball can give you a, a goal of um, paying it down in a more creative way. So you want to learn about that too. So there's just three tips I want to, or yeah. topics. What yeah. would you add? One of the tips I want to talk about is, it's okay, let's say you want to get a student loan. How mm. much? 
What's the reasonable amount to get? Ooh, okay? I like that you're going here. And I think the best tip for those, and I think as a parent looking at for your kids or maybe you thinking about it for yourself, you're going back to school or you're in that age. I mean, bless you if you're 17 and watching our channel right now. Um, think of what your first year salary is going to be upon graduation. If your first year salary is going to be 40 grand when you get out of college, you should not have student loan debt more than 40 grand. I think it's a good rule of thumb to think of, well, I'm going to be a doctor. Okay. That's okay to get $150,000 of student loan debt. It's going to take you eight years. You might need that much. If you're like, I'm going to be a school teacher. Don't go get $150,000 of student loan debt and go to USC, okay? The school's not going to pay you more. Okay, so think about what job you're going to get um, and that you're looking to get with your degree. Look at what the average first-year salary is, and that should set the baseline of not exceeding that amount from a student loan. Like me, I, I had $130,000 in student loan debt when I graduated from You've law school. You've never told me that. Yeah, $130,000. Now, I paid it off because yeah. I don't love debt, you know, didn't want to yeah. be burdened with this. So yeah. I paid it off. And um, I do want my $20,000 check, Mr. Biden, but that's cool. Yeah. Um, you're a little late on the drop here for me. So, but um, I, w- I was going to law school and I knew I would, and I probably took a little more, but I had to add a family. So, um, but think of those, what you're going to make at the end of the day in the career pursuing. I love it. Because it's an investment. Yep. I've heard people work, the the concept I want to just say there is work backwards. So many kids go to college. What are you going to do? I don't know. I I was working on a a campus teaching some classes last year and I love to sit down with kids. It was shocking. I go, what do you, what's your major? And they've got a major. And I go, well, what does that do? Like, what what are you going to do with that major? Well, I mean, no, go, no, right now. (laughs) And what's your average salary? And I've seen people say 1X, or 2x at most student debt on your annual first year salary. I like the 1x, just whatever that first annual salary is, start yeah. with the end in mind. I wanna say something else too. You know what they say though, Mark, not all who wander are lost, but you know what? They're not going anywhere either. So if you're in that category of people that are kind of wandering, a little lost in college, it takes you a while to actually get somewhere. And so I think college and the way I've tried to approach it is, this is an investment in something. If you're going to spend four years doing something, what are you getting out of it? Is that degree going to help you in your life? Or is this just some transition period of your life to adulthood that you're just going to rack up a huge student loan debt? I love it. And, and so uh, in college is an experience that I think I, I'm a firm believer in because I did it. Now, here's another other twist here. For some of you that are approaching college now, um, you're, we talked about those that are in debt. We did the rant, yada, yada. Now, this is about your approaching college for your kids as well. I know that many people listening here have the children. So this is these are some important points. We pay the price. I've got um, a child in college right now. I've got my kids are between yeah, ages 19 one. and 28. Uh, Matt's same. Uh, he's got three kids in that same range, finished or finishing college. So we're, we've got some life experience here. So let me say another thing. I graduated with college with no student debt. Law school and a master's. It took me 11 years. Matt Sorensen did it in half the time. He had 130,000 in debt. <laughs> Both situations were okay. Both were different. I ran a business and had, I, Matt worked his butt off for college too to keep yeah, it at 130. Yeah. I'm not taking away from that. But yeah, I took I longer to get through school because I ran a business and paid for a lot of that and I had two rental properties during that process. I sold a rental property to pay for college in that process. I did two rehabs during college. I So I had a longer experience through college, and that's okay too. Mm-hmm. I, if, you're, if you've got a kid that's wandering around as a freshman, get them the hell out of college. <laughs> Sit down and go, let's work for a year. What do you want to do? Let's find a career path for you and get back to college with a purpose. And get that kid involved in real estate. Get him involved in the, the in metaverse or in crypto. Get him involved in the stock market. Get him involved in something where they find a vision. But go to college with a purpose and take your time. It's okay to take your time. I did. So, yeah, another perspective. Yeah, what I would say, let's hit, I want to hit a, like a couple don'ts and then let's get into the do's. Because I want to okay. talk about what you should be doing. We've yes. got, there's some strategies here. Yes. Okay? I don't want to like Well, bear, this is should be do's. Lead. This yeah. should be. Yeah, this okay. should be. But um, let me hit a couple don'ts. Don't raid your own retirement oh. account. Take out a oh home equity gosh. loan to pay for your kid's college. Don't do it. Okay. You have got to worry about your own Don't retirement first. Um, I get your kids emotional. need to think about other strategies. And we've had those clients over oh the years that have done it, and they're terrified because they've raided the equity in their house. 
They've raided, they've taken out money out of their retirement account and they've got nothing left because they blew it on their kid's college. You know, we have a financial advisor, former financial advisor that works at Directed IRA. I remember him telling me one time, he said, when I would meet with a new client, he's like, and we were trained this way, people are more inclined to save for college for their kids. They're more motivated to do that than to save for their own retirement. Where in the hell does that come from? It, the pressure of you want your kids to be successful and be taken care of. You love them. You're supposed to provide for them. I mean, you are? I get it. I get oh. that. I get that wow. sentiment of people that want to do that. <laughs> so, want, I, but, we have at my house what's called the Kohler Independence Plan. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's yeah, a contract kip. that my kids had signed. Matt knows this. Yeah, I know. The, I know about the Kip. Yep, the Kip Kohler Independence Plan. <laughs> it is uh, trademark. Um, but no, I literally with my kids when they graduated from high school, I said, "Here's your independence plan." you're going to be paying for your own crap within four years. And we're going to do it over a process and over a period of time. And if you want to go into student debt, it's on you. I am not paying for your college. Here's what I'm going to pay for over the next four years as we transition you to independence. Oh, you want to bitch and moan? Well, guess what? I was a janitor for 10 years and ran a small business and fixed up rental property while I went to college. You want something better? Go find a different parent. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, that's the conversation. And I said, sign here. Yeah. And they signed the Kohler Independence Plan. And yeah. There's some perks in there, you know. I mean, it's yeah. not, it's not, you know, you you transition them. I do because it's I a, get it. You have kids that graduate from high school; they don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, yet. you just throw them out. Yeah, you, you, you got to have some balance here. Yes. So that's why the, that's the that's the spirit of the Kohler. Yeah, you want to pay for a consultation for an hour? I'll tell you about the Kohler Independence Plan, but I don't have time to freaking do it for free for everybody. Too bad. Yeah, figure <laughs> it out. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's um, let's get to some of these tools that you can use. And some of you have heard of these. For things. now, we're in the saving yeah. phase. Yeah, now we're in the saving phase. Because okay. okay, let's Real let's back up. Okay. Debt is paying for something you can't afford, mm, right? I like save. That. If you want something, save for it. I hate that. Is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hold on, but what if I want it now? And I will pay for it later. Can I have it now? No, mm. you don't have any money. <laughs> well, I really, really want it right now. And I know I can pay for it later. Can I have it now? No. <laughs> okay, what if I buy it now and then pay for it over time? <laughs> Can I do that? No. Yeah. This is a Steve yeah. Martin skit. I, I, nail I'm this confused. Down. I'm SNL. confused. <laughs> it's an SNL Steve Martin skit on debt here, but um, you did you did great, Amy Poehler there. I was trying. I didn't know my lines very well, yeah. but you were doing Steve Martin pretty good. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but seriously, like um, yeah. I know it ob it sounds obvious, and I know it's tough. You right, you're sacrificing to save. You're choosing to set this money aside. But for those of you who have kids that want to send them to college and help them out, we love that. Don't do it. With your money. Don't do it with your retirement. No, no. Don't no. do it with the equity in your home. Yeah. Okay, that's for you, for the long haul, for your financial security and everything you're working for. There's okay. another way to save. And, and I know some of you are out there going, it's too late. My kid's 18 or 16. Mark, you uh, people, I know what you're thinking. I've sat with hundreds of you over the years on Zoom or on a phone call or in person. You're sitting there going, well, when my kid was three years old, we didn't make enough money to save for their college. Now I'm finally making money. They're 15, they're 16, they're 17. We're looking down the barrel. We're getting ready to take the SATs, the ACTs. We're going to be applying for college in the next 18 months or two years. There, I didn't have money back then. We're going to talk about that. So I have to raid my retirement. I have to go get a home equity loan. I have to, No, you don't. Have a reality check with your kids. Talk about these hard things that I just mentioned about how long it took me through to get through school. You have to maybe change your mindset and it's okay. Do not give up on your future because of some mindset that you've got to give them a four-year Northwestern degree experience. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. Okay. So All right. I'm going to say this. Okay. Some of you are like, well, Mark, my kid's one year old. We're living month to month. It's tight. That's okay. We're going to start with baby steps. There's three plans to choose from, and we're going to start all three maybe. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just start saving $10 a week, $20 a week, and get that snowball in the positive sense going down the hill, building inertia. You will be shocked at what just a little bit of savings now in these tax deferred vehicles will create for you in a big, big way. And there's three of them that we wanna rely on. But I think the concept that I wanted to say first is you can start small, but it's important to start now. Mm -hmm. And then you get addicted to this as it goes. Don't wait until you have more money to start it. Start it with $5 a week. Yeah. So three plans. Yep. Lay them out in general first. All right. We got the 529, which by the way, you can put 16,000 a year in per kid. 
that's the cool thing about it. You can put a lot of money into it, but we're going to get into some downsides on it, which has to do with the returns being crappy. But, okay, we got the 529 plan. Okay. okay, you got the Covered L, Education Savings Account, or ESA. The Covered L allows you to put 2000 a year in. Now, these both of these plans, you do not get a federal income tax deduction when you put the money in. The benefit of these is it grows and can come out tax-free for college. So it's a way to save, invest, and all that growth you don't pay tax on, but you get to use it to pay for college, room and board, qualifying education and, expenses. And quickly, Matt alluded to, did you hear him? The 529 allows you to put in more, but you don't get to control the investment and the returns might be crappy. With the Coverdell, you can only put in two grand, but you can control the investment and get 20, 30X returns yeah. with self-directing, who knows? The third option or this third one, this piece is actually of the, the equation, one that always gets left off the table because people don't think about it for education, but it happens to be my favorite. And there's two different ways to use it. Go ahead. The Roth IRA. I remember you're thinking, Matt, Roth IRA, that's, that's for retirement. That's not for education. Hear me out. Okay. We yeah. like to say that here. Hear me out. I'm going <laughs> to lower you into a pit by your feet. Hear me out. This is a, this is a colorism. <laughs> okay. Hear us out. All right. Roth IRA. You can put six grand a year into it. Or if your kid has earned income, they can put six grand a year into it. Or if you got a spouse, they can put six grand a year into their Roth. Right there, you got 18 grand, you can be put into a Roth IRA. Every year, you can invest it in whenever the heck you want. It grows and comes out tax-free at your retirement. But also, that six grand you put in every year, you can pull it out for whatever you want. If I Penalty-free, tax-free. If I did five years of contributions in a Roth IRA, and that's $30,000, Okay, six grand every year, five years, thirty thousand dollars, and that account now is worth forty-five grand from all the investments, returns, everything. Well, I can still take out the thirty grand and use that to pay for my kids' college, and that other fifteen of extra growth, it's sitting in my account, yeah. and I it's there for my retirement in the future, and it was a great tool to save. I didn't have to pay tax, but I got to get that money back out. I can use it, no penalty. Okay, now I'm going to catch college. Matt here in. Are you going to bum people I'm out gonna, here? I'm going to, no, I'm going to, I don't know how to say this, but you said one thing and then said another. So I'm going to say this. Matt's number one rule was don't pull out of your retirement for your kids. And I would mean also contributions. So these are Roth IRAs for the kids, in my opinion. Or let me say this, because I've, this, there's two ways to do it. You can do the Roth IRA for the kids if they have earned income. Yeah, small business, baby. Okay. Here's the book right here on the desk. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Or they got a summer job, whatever. You, they have to have earned income. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. If you're not contributing to a Roth IRA already for yourself and you're like, I need to start putting money away for my college kid's education, what account should I use? I've done the Coverdell for 2K. I might do the Roth IRA and I've had lots of clients do that, even though it's in their name. Okay, all right. Kind of contradicts your first statement a little. But yeah. maybe Matt's saying, well, they, they're, they're doing a, a solo 401k. They've got other retirement yeah, vehicles you've, Otherwise, going. you're contributing to your 401k. Yeah. I'm not saying that's your only retirement account. Fair and enough. I'm saying these are new dollars you're thinking of saving for your kid's education. Okay. It's I like not that. peeling it out of your retirement strategy or buck, planning for yourself. and planning strategy. Okay. Yeah. Good. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. I knew what you meant. But I but it's a tool that a lot of people just aren't using, you yep. know? Yep. I... um. I don't know which is best for you. That that's the, the 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 trick here because how many kids do you have? How old are they? What's your income at? Are you in personal debt? Do you have some credit card debt we got to get out of? Um, doing an overhaul of kind of an overhaul of <laughs> your financial future personally. I I just I know it, this is a a Christian statement that many of you've heard. You know. Don't give someone a fish, teach them how to fish. And before you can help someone else, you got to make sure your own house is in order. And you know, there's some Christ biblical, you know, parables and yeah, analogies a there. there. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but, but, you know, you're going to hear things like that on Sundays. But the, the point is, people, you've got to take care of yourself. You got to make sure you're healthy financially before we start worrying about the kids' education. And then when you do say, okay, it's time to help with the kids' education. Let's make sure that we're building it as part of our overall plan and it's coordinated. And so we just want you to make sure these tools are on the table for discussion. A lot of financial advisors, they're all in on the 529. That's where they get the biggest commissions. So that's where they make the most money. That's what they're sold. Just like the financial advisor man quoted that's now works for us at Directed. He's like, that was our, that's what we were trained to talk about, 529. Didn't even bring up the Coverdale. Didn't even bring up the Roth. 
So you're getting some inside knowledge here of these other strategies work, but you're not hearing about them because they don't work for the Wall Street sales machine. So you've got to be able to talk about those and learn about them and bring them to, to, to the table with your financial planner, your tax attorney. Our tax attorneys would love to talk to you about this. We're not going to tell you what to go and invest in, but we're going to tell you what structures work. Yeah. Here's one thing. I just want to contrast some of these accounts as you're thinking about it. Okay. And I know you challenged me on the Roth for yourself that's a set aside for that could be maybe used for your kid's education. Again, I'm saying these are additional dollars you wouldn't otherwise be saving for retirement that you're setting aside for your kid's education. You just happen to use a Roth IRA. Because okay. you, you know already what? got your own retirement plan going. Yeah. Sometimes your kid doesn't go to college. You're like, Ooh, oh, my kid's a college kid. Oh. Your kid doesn't end up going to college. All right. Okay. And you have money. Well, that Roth IRA is still sitting there for you. What happens if you put it into a 529 or covered out ESA? You can move it to another kid. Let's say you got a younger kid coming up that might go to college. But eventually, if one of your kids doesn't use it, you can actually transfer it to like a niece or nephew and other family, extended family members to, that could use it. Yeah. But eventually, if you don't, you got to take it out and distribute it and you got to pay tax on the growth. So it, it only can get used for education expenses. Whereas the Roth, again, I'm not trying to always, I'm always no, I love the Roth it. I love card, it. Yeah. has some other, it's a, got a little more flexibility to it if your kid doesn't end up going to college. Yep, love it. Um, here's some, uh, so we don't poo-poo on each one and we talk pros and cons. The 529, there's a state tax deduction in a lot of states for the 529, yeah. which a lot of people like. Also, grandpas and grandmas can throw money into a 529 and you can exceed the 16,000 per year with some... Um, other methods. So the the 529 is can get supercharged very quickly, but your rates of return are based on the state plan you choose. And you don't have to go to the college in the state where the 529 is maintained, uh, but it is smoke and mirrors. There is so hard to actually d discover after fees what your actual rate of return is in your 529. I was debating with Katie, one of the attorneys in our office. I'm like, yeah, I, I can find what the rate of return is on the 529. Oh, I, she goes, no, you can find it. And I go, after fees? Oh, well, you know, those are buried in there somewhere, right? You know, So the 529, again, we have to know, but the good thing is you can put a lot of money away. You get a state tax. Return. The Coverdale, oh, I love the Coverdale. Yeah, Coverdale's so cool. Well, the but, Coverdale, you can invest in whatever you want. Mm -hmm. We have lots of Coverdales at Directed IRA. People do real estate deals in it. They invest in startups. We have a lot of Coverdales that have bought crypto, you yeah, know? Yeah. And they're holding it for the long haul, and they're thinking these investments are going to play out. You could buy stocks. You could just buy the S&P 500 fund. You could buy Apple, whatever yeah. you want. Okay, you can pick a specific investment asset. The 529 is like a state-managed fund. Like, they just have an investment manager that gets all this money of everyone's 529, and they get to run it, they get to charge their fees, they put whatever mix in, they never seem to be able to beat the general market, yeah. and then they get to take their fees out, and then you guys, everybody else gets what's left. That's the awesome 529. Yeah. But some people still use it, and I'm not saying don't use the 529, actually. I'm saying, think about the Roth IRA and the Coverdell first. I would actually go in that order. Um, or maybe covered L Roth, but then 529 later. And I get I, it, people I that like do that. the 529, because they're like, you know what, this year I just have like an extra 10 grand, 15 grand. I've already done those. I just want to throw it in the 529. I want to have this thing just growing and knowing my, it's there for my kids. Yes. You know, and, get the and state I can deduction. see that. Yeah. 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 Like in Arizona, there's a state income tax deduction for it where I'm at. And I, you know, it's not huge, but it's something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a little perk that. I like that lineup. You. At bare minimum, start with the Coverdale, then go to the Roth, and go to the 529. I like that order. Now, here's another tax strategy in this mix. Hence, my book, Tax and Legal Playbook, here is, okay, everybody, take a breath. Whew. Let me advocate for this. Quit paying taxes at your bracket on your tax return and then funding your kid's college retirement. I'm sorry, you're, oh my gosh, let me repeat this. I want to make sure we've got a good sound bite here. Quit, <laughs> quit paying taxes in your bracket on your tax return and then taking your after-tax dollars to fund your kids' college savings. Put your kids on the payroll or as a subcontractor or as an, a non-withholding employee in your small business and let them fund their own college savings. Your kid can put money into their Coverdale. Your kid can put money into their Roth, but you get a tax deduction to pay them to do it. So when my kids were starting on payroll 
six, seven, eight years old. I'm not having to withhold FICA. I'm not issuing them W-2s. They're not having to file a tax return. It depends on the state you're in and the dollar amounts, but this is all in my book, Tax and Legal Playbook. Pay your kids, get them involved in the business. Could be a rental property. Now you're getting a write-off and you're funding their Roth. It's a backdoor. People, you don't get a write-off for a Roth. Well, pay your kids, get a write-off and let them fund the Roth. Eh, you kind of backdoored it. Mm. And I love okay. that strategy. Yeah. Let yeah. your we, kids fund their college through a write-off. Yeah, get them involved in your business. Gosh, that's what a great education that is in and of itself. <sighs> Freaking The school you're going to send them to. So, yeah. Uh, and there happens to be a book on that about paying your kids. It's a chapter yeah. in the Tax Legal Playbook. Oh. We have prior podcast episodes on just that strategy strategy alone where you can you know, go deep on it. Yeah, and I'm over here on the other side of the desk. We've got the self-directed IRA handbook, which you can dive deep on the Roth and the Coverdale and how you're going to invest those and what your options are. Ooh, speaking of which, we've got the Directed IRA Summit coming up in October here in Phoenix. You can come in person, get online, and we've got a yep. day and a half of just incredible content on this. Very affordable. Um, yep, October 20th and 21st, sdiarasummit.com. Mark and I will be there, of course, dropping knowledge. We have awesome speakers, a lot of investment topics this year, actually. I've got a lot of people that have expertise in certain investment assets we're going to be talking about. We'll be over, like, how to make sure your accounts are in compliance and you know the rules and how to get started. But we're going to hit, like, all right, let's take this thing to the next level. How do you analyze investments? How do you make decisions from real estate to private funds to all these different things we're going to be hitting? It's going to be... It's going to be good. I'm like, how, what, I want to, how, what, what should I learn more about this? And it's about the investment assets. That's what people want to know. Yeah. And also, I'm, if you're like, well, I haven't started a side hustle or my side hustle really isn't producing the income I want, I'm doing the first week in October, my Costa Mesa, eight steps to start or grow your business, two-day workshop. Very affordable. Again, it's going to be down in Anaheim, uh, Irvine, which is, I'm going to say it's going to be in Irvine, all those. <laughs> Orange County. Orange, Orange County. County. It's going to be in Orange County. Come it's going to be in the OC. It's going to be in the OC. Come down, um, and that's two days on building your business. I have a lot of parents that bring their kids to that. I love to talk about the lemonade stand and how you, that concept when kids can get their heads around it. And so if you want to build your business, that's the first week in October, and you go to markjkohler.com, check out that workshop. A great, you can watch on Zoom. It'll be recorded. And I have an eight steps workbook to build your business. Even some of you that have successful million dollar businesses find, oh my gosh, your chapter on the marketing or on the business structure, or the legal or the tax was so helpful. So, and anyway, we've got resources for you. We're not just going to throw this out and say, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off. Yeah. Off with you. Yeah. No. Yeah. We, we got you. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me, I just want to hit a couple of things just because we're not going to be able to unpack every topic we talked about. But let me just say this. We have a separate podcast episode on paying your kids. We have a separate podcast episode on Coverdells and 529s comparing. We have separate podcast episodes on Roth IRAs and how they work that goes over this stuff in, in their entirety. We're just talking about how to use these individual tools and strategies for education and paying for your kid's college. So um, think of these strategies. There's, there's more to learn on them, but it's not rocket science either, okay? I always say... It's like playing a board game. You just got to learn the rules or do it with someone that's done it before. Once you have that down, you're good to go. Um, and once you start using these accounts and you figure out what works for you, you do the same thing every year. It's just the same thing. I'm using the same accounts, making the same contributions. It gets a little easier, not setting up new accounts, not having to figure out the process and everything. You get everything linked. You see how it's going. And you just get in a good routine. Then at the end of the day, if you've been doing this for five years, 10 years, you know, I don't know your timeline here on kid going to college, you're like, oh my gosh. This is so nice to have this money set aside. Kind of like saving for anything, like <laughs> a vacation, a car. I mean, you know, anything in your life, like the new TV. I don't care what it is. Like, oh, I can actually pay for this. I don't need to go. Can I get three easy payments? Mm. You know? Of, yeah, it's, you know those, so I hate those words. There's some satisfaction in that. And, and also, um, you know, and I know there's this urge to not have your kids have student loan debt. I was the same way. You know, my kids decided to go to state schools and they both got, they got my two older ones. They got full ride scholarships for academic distinction. That's another thing to talk to your kids about. I gave my kid perks for that. I said, hey, if I don't have to help you in college because you get a scholarship, I don't have to pay for your tuition. I'm going to help cover your room and board. I'm going to help cover your car expense, you know. And I think one thing is let your kids be aware of that before they oh, get there. Oh, talking about it. Let your kids yeah. be aware. It gives them something to work for. They know that good grades pays that yep. it's going to help them. They don't know that. Okay. Your kids are teenagers. They do not know this. Yep. 
They don't. You have to tell them. <laughs> and I think expectations of parenting, and I guess we're giving parenting advice, yes. heaven forbid. <laughs> but, <laughs> my kids are like, do not go there. You suck. But anyway, uh, <laughs> parenting advice, another 101, is communicating with your kids' expectations. Some kids think they, they literally graduate, and you're like, oh, you're not paying for college? And some parents are like, no, go, get out. And they just throw the kids to the wolves, you know, and they're out waiting tables. Um, the, and so the sooner you can sit down with your kids and go, okay, here's our plan. By age 25, age 24, 23, whatever it is, we want you on your own. Here's how we're going to help you do it. But we're not going to do it for you. And that Kohler Independence Plan was a reality. And the yeah. kids are like, okay, well, now I know. Now, maybe it was a little emotional at age 16 to realize, oh, I'm not going to be on the the family wagon that long okay and but <laughs> i'm not gonna be living in your basement at 30 and d doing my laundry no 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 so dang <laughs> having that conversation early on and setting expectations is so helpful okay as part of resources too if you get to markjkohler.com i have a whole article on 529 versus esa just published it last month um i probably need to go edit it and back off the rat rants on 529 get onto the Coverdale Roth 529 yeah. plan a little more. Like I said, we really beat the crap out of this with our lawyers in the last month and think we came up with a better equation, a better yeah. algorithm. I think we cracked the code on this. Yeah. You could say that. Yeah. Okay. Well, All take right. us out, my friend. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Um, please get over to directedira.com slash podcast because we got an open form episode coming up. So you can submit your questions there on any self-directed topic you want. You got more questions on the Coverdell or ESA we talked about today using the Roth IRA for education expense. Submit those over at directedira.com slash podcast. And we will be back next week with another amazing episode of Directed IRA Podcast. Thanks, everyone. Stay Thanks, calm. Self-direct on. <laughs>